CrossFit is three things. It's constantly varied, it's functional movements, and it's high intensity. These three things together are CrossFit. It's, it's hard to describe this to your friends. This, this, this itself explains everything, but it, it satisfies nobody, right? What was the first one? Constantly, constantly varied. Yeah, you're not here. talk about very functional so constantly very if you come from a background of I'm gonna do chest and triceps on Monday and back back and biceps on Tuesday and run long slow distance Tuesday and Thursday and I'm gonna get fit doing it it's you know it's it's patently false patently wrong it doesn't work what you're gonna be what the fitness you're gonna get out of that is you're gonna be excellent at pushing things on Monday and you're gonna suck at pushing things on Tuesday. You're gonna be great at running on Tuesday Thursday you're not gonna run you're gonna be the slowest human being on earth on Monday, and that's it. Right? That's that's a segmented training capacity creates a segmented overall adaptation, right? So we wanna everything is varied. And here's what I mean. If you, you know in CrossFit, every day is different, every workout is different, the loads are different, the times are different, the movements are different, the reps are different. And if you're used to working out three days a week on certain days, we want you to mix it up. Come in if you're a Monday, Wednesday, Friday guy, come in Tuesday, Thursdays once. If you come in at 1 p.m. Come into a 6 a.m. once in a while. Or if you're used to eating two hours before, eat a double double and go right to the workout. If you're used to, yes. If you're used to, eat, if you're used to, I've, and I've done all of these things. I like. I remember there was an eight, there was an 8 a.m. class. We used to have 8 a.m. classes. I would wake up. I woke up at 7:50 once and came straight to the gym and worked out. It's really cool. It's really cool to see what you're to, to see what kind of fitness that you have. The routine is the enemy. Yes, routine is the enemy. So mix it up. You know, just because the because. Because CrossFit's charter is to give you a fitness that's ready for anything, it's important for you to disinvest in any set amount of reps and schemes and anything like that, right? Constantly varied. So it's not just the workouts and the movements that are varied. It's when you're working out. It's how you're working out. We even 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 what we call accommodation. We've got people in here that have been doing this for quite a while. That they like different. They like certain bars. They like certain barbells. They like certain parts on the bar, which is funny. But once they get into competitions, they're not used to that barbell. The kettlebell is from a different company, right? The rings are wood, not fiberglass. So we want you, we don't want you to get that used to shit. Like, mix it up a little bit. Go to different CrossFit gyms. Work out in the heat. Work out in the sun. So just vary everything. Constantly vary. That's all I have to say about that. Functional movements. These are moved, but long before CrossFit was created, long before you met me, you were doing these movements anyway, right? At some point, all of you are gonna have to sit up out of sit up out of your chairs. We just call that squatting. At some point, you're gonna have to pick up your keys off the ground. We just call that deadlifting, right? So we just teach you how to do it biomechanically correct. Go to a construction site. Go to go to a, a military base. If someone's got to take their their ruck from the ground and put it on, say, their Humvee, which is where, where the deck is here, and if it's really heavy, they're going to do something that looks like this, right? But we just taught you how to clean and jerk because you can. This, this is weightlifting to me. I don't, I don't have to perfectly deadlift this thing. But if you keep if you keep adding load and washing and adding load and washing and adding load and washing, at some point you're going to have to deadlift it. It's just that's just the end. That's just the end. Group. It's not like oh I have 300 pounds here and I got it to here and I didn't deadlift it. I would like to know how you got it up there outside of your own body. Right? So that's what functional movements are. And uh, Greg Glassman made this thing where he attended, he attended this symposium where the, the band people were there and the Pilates people were there and the Swiss ball people were there and everyone's talking about functional this and functional that and functional that and everyone's not even there. But everyone was thinking of different things when they were thinking of functional. No, no definition of functional had been had yet been observed. So everyone's kind of not everyone's kind of like agreeing and oh this is really cool. But everyone's thinking of different shit. That's why defining terms is so important. So now here's here's where it becomes really cool. Functional movements are unique in their ability to move large loads, long distances, quickly, which again is just that just that definition of power or intensity. The squat, the squat, you can move much more load with a push jerk than you can with regular pressing. You can deadlift hundreds of pounds where you weren't you weren't able to say just kind of bent arm reverse curl it. Right? You can clean much more weight than you can than you can curl. There's no amount, I, I, I told these guys there's no amount of leg extension, leg curl adduction, abduction, that'll lead to a 300 pound back squat. It just doesn't happen, okay? So, functional movements are that. There are several other things, like, 
there's several other things that are components of it, but number one, safe. They are inherently safe. I know you've all at this at some point have seen this diagram before where we want you to deadlift and we want your back to look like this. If I if I loaded if I loaded Jackson's barbell up to say a thousand pounds and he lifted it looking like this, what would happen to Jackson? If he if, if he tried to pick up a thousand pounds and he looked like that. He wouldn't be able to lift it. He wouldn't be able to lift it, right, yeah, right. That's it. Yes, yeah, so you just stay there. Yeah. You just stay there. Yeah. yeah. Nothing would hurt. He's pride. Yeah. Might be hurt, but shame. outside of shame, yeah. right? Yeah. Nothing he would happen. He would hurt himself the second he, he, he deviated. From right. His, yes. Very good. Yeah. If Jackson tried to lift it like this, yeah. or the chain, or the chain, <laughs> he's brought. He's basically brought calamity to his family because he can't bring home the bread. Right? But they are they are inherently safe. Safe at post maximal loads. If you look at say the knee, the leg extension in the global gyms, the patella is not actually sitting in its socket as you're doing it. It is not safe at post maximal loads. So our contention is, over time, collectively, doing functional movements are safe. It's the future of rehab in our mind, right? Because when someone has lower back injuries here, guess what we have them doing? Squatting and deadlifting, but with PVC pipe. Nothing changes, right? Nothing changes in the functional movement. So, they're essential. And essential to what? Independent living. So here's how that goes. We, we will sometimes, this happens a lot in CrossFit, very rarely in here, but it has happened here, where a doctor will say, we, you know, they're, they're kind of hurt, we don't, we don't want them squatting, we don't want them deadlifting. That's fine. You know, it's like, fuck, at first. But, I'm not going to have them squat, but all I'm going to have them do is, is put a chair right under them, and I'm going to have them keep their back straight, and I'm going to have them sit their hips back, and just kind of make sure, make sure that their spine is stable as they're sitting back and lower and lower, and learn to sit in the chair biomechanically correct. And from that point, I'm going to teach them those same mechanics and have them kind of rise up out of the chair where their butt and hamstrings and adductors are, are loading such that the spine is stable for the entirety of the movement. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. They can do that. But I'm not going to have them squat. I'm not going to have them squat, right? Same thing. I don't want them deadlifting. That's fine. All I'm going to do is I'm going to teach them to have to fill up two bags of groceries and have them put it right here on each side. I'm going to have their spine stable. I'm going to teach them to shove the hips back, reach down and grab the groceries and actually them up here and walk forward and once they've gotten in their home, shove the hips back and bring the groceries back down in a nice safe manner and close the door. But I'm not gonna have them deadlift. No, that, that's cool, totally cool, right? So, essential, same, same thing. Now, other things too, multi-joint compound movements, not a lot of isolation movements going on in CrossFit, right? Not a lot at all. There's, not, there's, no, there's no amount of bicep curls that I'll have you do where pull-ups won't solve that problem, whatever that problem is. Same thing, same thing for the, the only, the only reason we like the GHD machine is because it, it potentiates the hip, and the hip is where all of our awesomeness comes from, right? Multi-joint compound, and finally, there's a core to extremity. Everything starts from here and radiates out to the extremity. Okay, so that's the functional movement. Now, intensity. We already went over it. The definition of intensity is this. Large loads, long distances, and quickly. It's the independent variable that gets you everything you want to have an exercise program, the fastest and the best. And don't answer this. We know that intensity is basically the best way to go about exercise. What is the what is the one drawback to intensity? What's the one bad thing about it? Drawback? Yes, because it burns more fat. It gets you stronger. It gets you faster. It improves cardiorespiratory endurance, stamina, strength, power, speed, all that stuff. Even losing weight even your heart rate, right? All the, all, the good, all the good things you want out of aerobic, right? All the good things you, that your neighbor wants out of aerobic exercise, high intensity, high intensity anaerobic exercise will get you those things faster. What is the drawback of, of high intensity work? Complete exhaustion. Hard, that's, that's what it is. The hard part about exercise is that it's very tough. It's uncomfortable, right? So, and you all know this, you all know this because you've done CrossFit for a while. You're on the floor gas, not because we asked you to, and our floor is like not, not very nice to lay down on. But, but, but it is oh so nice. But it's oh so, so nice, right? <laughs> because, yeah, I tell them mentally, it takes a kind of person where if you have a bucket of water, you've got to stick your hands into your pocket and put your head in and drown yourself. That's the kind of mental toughness it takes to actually engage these workouts on a regular basis, right? Intensity is the biggest tell. Not, it's it's very very hard. Not a lot of people, not a lot of people want to pursue it just because of the nature of the work. Um, just just on a, just as an aside, the people that come into this gym, you know, our on ramp program 
10, on average, 10 people will join and one or two people will end up staying after month four or five. That's just the numbers. One of those, I don't necessarily care what happens to the other eight that leave, but the one or two that end up staying, those are the ones that I want, right? And that's not just CrossFit, that's any elite, anything, right? If you want to go into a university, high competition job, people bitch about the marketplace, that's the fucking way it is, man, right? You don't, you don't, you don't get the best by, you don't get the best by, by comfortable. right? You don't get the best by actually getting to pick them. You, it, it all, the best always comes from a large pool, readily available, and with, you know, five or six percent of those people doing this, doing this thing, and you, are the one that are, that has to pick them up. You don't get to choose it. Even as trainers, we'll I'll see I see this over and over again. There's gonna be people who come in and it looks like they're gonna be studs, right? They're just gonna kill shit and out inside of three weeks they're gone. You know, nothing. I, I call it hard on the outside, soft on the inside, right? There's people who come in where you look at them, it's like oh my god, they need a lot of work. It's like they need. What did you do to yourself in your life that you look like this, right? But eight months later, it's like they don't even look like the same person. Like, all right, we've got two or three of those people in the gym right now. Where, I look at him and, and I try not to make judgments, but I'm like, nah, you know, like it's gonna take, it's gonna take months to fix you, you know. But but guess what? But guess what? Months later, they're still there, and it did take months to fix them. But they kept coming and kept coming and kept coming and kept coming, you know. And so that's, they didn't mind the intensity because all they, they all they wanted was what the intensity did. We had a, we had a woman who couldn't squat past here. I shit you not, she could not she could not squat past here. We gave her. She had PVC pipe and a 15 pound bar, and we had to give her the box plus, I think, a 45 pound plate for her to be able to squat on. You know, we give people the ball sometimes to squat. She wasn't even able to do that. It turned out to be great. Totally changed her life. Right? That's that's really what that's really what the intensity brings. That's what CrossFit is about. There's people with medical conditions that they were presented with basically no confidence, no hope that CrossFit was able to that CrossFit was able to fix. Right? I I used to have right knee problems and left IT band problems. They're not there anymore. When I tried to do overhead squats at first, this shoulder would go numb, and this, I remember my left hand tingling like on the way down. Who has experienced this with the overhead squat? Like if you have some people where it's like this impingement kind of thing, now I can overhead squat 225, right, with no with no issues. So that's all just, just you know, my advice is to stick with it. I'm, I don't want to sound callous, but I don't necessarily care on one level if you do or not, but if you do, I usually I usually end up falling in love with the people that that stay, right? Platonically, of course. All right, Laura. All right. So <laughs> nice. Yeah. Must be a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's the definition of CrossFit, right? Constantly varied, functional movement, high intensity. That's the scientific de definition. Don't try telling this to your friends when they ask you what it is. They'll just get pissed off and you just get frustrated. Um, and on and in the real world, what it looks like is you've got a community of people. Where the, where the nature of the work tends to weed out, it tends to self-select for a bunch of really cool character traits. Right? You've got a bunch of people who work hard, work hard consistently, very goal-oriented, right? very results-oriented, competitive. Um, I'm not going to say friendly, but, but love each other. You know, it's like a sports team with no seasons. That's, that's what it feels like to me. And people get very close. I don't know if you see on Facebook, we party together all the time. It's really, really something else. It's unprecedented in, in the fitness I love it. I love this stuff. So, that's the first part of the 201. Any questions on fitness, health, or CrossFit so far? Yeah.